Hi everybody, Dr. Chris Chatsaglou here from Revolution Health, and today I'm going to be going through an 8 to 10 mobility routine called Controlled Articular Rotations. These are putting your joints through a full range of motion, and we're going to basically do a whole body mobility routine that way. This is based on the teachings of functional range systems, and this is a really good program that you want to do to either supplement your chiropractic care or if you want to just warm up in the morning or before training, this is a great way to allow your body to use its joints through its full range of motion and really improve overall joint and articular health as well as sending good signals back through the nerve system back to the brain. And so we're going to start with a few movements. I want you to keep in mind three things as we do these. The first thing is tension. We're going to be creating about 30% tension throughout the body. So as we do these movements, we're going to hold our body tight. Um, the part that's not moving, we're going to keep our fists clenched. We're going to keep our feet dri driven into the ground. We're going to squeeze our glutes, squeeze our diaphragm. And we're going to make sure we have about 30% tension through the body. Number two, as we move through these big joint circles, we're going to pretend that same tension still applies as we move. So we're going to pretend we're going to be moving through something thick, like a thick soup or like a thick water or something. And the idea here is control and slow movements. And number three, pain points. If at any time we go through these motions and you find at some point when we start to close the joint here, we get some pinching, uh, pinch point on that closed side, we're going to just back away a little and make our joint circles a little bit smaller, especially when we get around the spine. So controlled articular rotations, 8 to 10 minutes every day. It's going to change your life and improve your overall health and well-being for sure. Let's go ahead and start. We're going to start with the spine. Creating 30% tension in the body. I'm going to start by moving my neck. I'm going to tuck my chin down as I, so I'm going to scrape my chin across over to my shoulder. As I get to my shoulder, I'm going to tilt my head back up to the ceiling. I'm going to sweep across and make an arc with my chin and chin down across my chest and back to the center. Going back up and around four times each direction. Making that circle a little bit bigger each time and making sure that we are creating 30% tension throughout the body. So back for a fourth one here. Trying to make as big a circle as possible. Chin up to the ceiling, across, and back down. Going the opposite direction now. Chin back, up and across, around. Nice and slow and controlled. Making that circle bigger with each pass and trying to only move the joint that we are focusing on. So we don't want to be moving our hips around as we do this. We want to make sure that we are only moving our neck here. Back up and around and back to the center. Next for the spine, we're going to move to all fours here. And from this position here, we're going to start at the tailbone and move up the spine into flexion one vertebrae at a time. Tucking my hips, moving slowly up the middle part of the back, into the shoulders, and into the neck, chin to the chest, and then reversing it, starting from the tailbone again, into extension, all the way up to the shoulders, and then to the neck. Starting at the tailbone again, one vertebrae at a time, trying to control the spine, moving very slowly, one more time, from the tailbone, into extension, looking up at the ceiling for full range of motion. We're going to reverse that down, starting at the neck, and then move, working our way down to the tailbone. Through the shoulders, into the mid-back, and eventually tucking the hips under. Starting at the head again, into extension, through the shoulders, try not to fall into our shoulders, but keeping good position, and then from the neck again. Slow and control. One more time, through the neck, shoulders, and into the hips. Standing back up, you can grab something like a yoga block, or hug something close to your body, or even just pressing your hands together like this. But we're going to create some tension 
feet firmly planted into the floor, rolling forward. Then we're gonna rotate, bend to the side, extend back all the way, up and around, bend to the side, rotate back to center. Rotate, bend to the side, extend back, all the way around. Making sure we're flexing forward here, rotating, bending to the side, extending back and around. One more time on that side, bending forward, extending back and around. Now to the other direction, rotating, side bending, extending back, side bending, rotating back to middle, rotate, side bend, Extend back, back to middle. Coming around two more times. We're not just making big, big circles, we're making small circles under tension and really sending good signals from our joints back to our brain to tell our brain that we are using every part of our body today. Next, we're gonna move on to the shoulders. Again, feet firmly planted into the floor, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the abdomen. We're gonna turn our palm up, we're gonna sweep across the body this way, and we're gonna come up. And as we get to the overhead position, we're not gonna press up, we're just gonna to get to the overhead position. And as we start to turn our hand back, we are going to reach behind us as far as we can, and then reverse that position back up. Rotate as we get overhead, and back across the body. Okay, we'll do three more. Keeping our elbows straight, pressing that shoulder up overhead and rotating. And as we rotate, we want to go for a little more rotation each time here. Trying to turn the palm up even higher each time and turning the palm back and around as much as we can as we get to the overhead position. Okay, same thing on the other side, sweeping across, elbows straight. Rotate as we get overhead, reach behind us, and then back the other way. Creating tension in the body so that the rest of the body doesn't move. And we're only moving the shoulder joint. Turning all the way through, back. Rotating the shoulder joint. One more here. Slow and controlled. If you want to slow this down on your own time, you can do that as well. Okay, nice. Next step, we're going to do the shoulder blades. From this, we're going to punch forward, up, and back, and down. Forward, up, back, and down. Tucking our shoulder blades up, and then back, and then tucking them back into our back pockets. Up, and back, and around. Okay? Then we're going to reverse that position. Back, up, punch it forward, and down. Back, up, punch it forward, and down. Back, up, punch it forward, and down. Next, onto the elbows. The pivot point here is going to be our pinkies. So keep an eye on my pinky fingers. As I bring and turn my palms up, I'm going to bring my elbows up. I'm going to rotate around my pinkies and press down, and then reverse. Up, rotate around my pinkies, press down, and again, for four reps, trying to get as much rotation in my elbows as possible. Once I've done four in one direction, we're going to reverse that, starting with palms up, up, out, Out, down, up, in, down. Moving on to the wrist now. The idea for the wrist is we want to imagine we have a cup balancing on top of our wrist here. So we don't want to tip the cup in any direction. So our arm stays perfectly flat, pointing towards the ceiling. And our hand is also going to stay perfectly flat. So no dragon fingers or uh, dinosaur fingers or whatever the saying is. We're going to stabilize with the other hand and we're going to do four circles in one direction. You might get some nice clicking from your wrist as we do this. For one direction and we'll reverse it for the other direction.
stabilizing the wrist, keeping it turned up with the other hand. And again, I'm not bending my fingers, keeping my fingers flat. And one more. Trying to get bigger circles each time with each movement. And as you can hear, my wrists like to click a lot because I am a chiropractor and I work with my hands all day. So I'm working on it. <laughs> We've done the spine, we've done the shoulders, the elbows, the wrist. Let's move on to the lower extremities right now. We're going to start with the hips. And the hips can be done one of two ways. I'm going to show you both ways. So I'll, on one side I'll do the standing version and on the other side I'll do the lying down version. So creating tension in the body. First thing we're going to do is we're going to bring this leg up and in. We're going to bring it as high as we can. We're going to bring it out to the side. Then we're going to turn our hip out, kick back and then bring it back to center. And then we're gonna reverse that position. Kick back, hip high, across the body, and back down. Once more in this direction, keeping a lot of tension. That'll help you keep balance. And one more. You can also do this one lying down. Getting a yoga block or two to support your head. Straight legs, one arm punched out, the other arm pulling back against that arm. We're gonna go ahead and bring that hip up, out, rotate here, back, and around. And then reversing, kick back, rotate open, closed, back down, back up, open, rotate, back, and around, one more time, kick back, open, rotate, and back down, okay? The hips should be the hardest part for most people. Moving on to the next step, we're going to move on to knees now. For the knees, we're just going to want to support underneath the thigh for right now, and we're going to start by turning the foot in. Bring that foot up, turn the foot out at the top, and back. Reversing that position, foot in. So we're just turning our foot back. Up, turn, back. Turn, back. Moving on to the next side for the knee. Turn the foot in, okay. Up, turn the foot out, back. Reverse. turning the tibia in and out. Next, we're going to do the ankles. For the ankles, we're going to go underneath, we're going to lock our arm, and we're going to hold our tibia in place so that it doesn't turn too much in and out, okay? And for this, we're going to gas pedal down, come across, gas pedal up, and across. Gas pedal down, around, up, Then we're going to reverse that position. Gas pedal down, back the other way, up, cross, gas pedal down, cross, up, around, cross down. We're taking this one in both directions. Same thing on the other side. Gas pedal down, cross, up, rotate in, down, cross. Slow. that position, up, cross, down, up, cross, down, cross, down, one more, down. Finally, the one that everybody hates, the toes. We're going to start by pressing our four outer toes into the ground and lifting our big toes. So, four outer toes into the ground, lifting our big toes, which is hard for me on the right side especially. And we're going to lift again, press, we're going to lift four times. 
pressing your outer toes into the ground and lifting your big toes. Then the opposite. We're going to press our big toes into the ground and lift our outer four toes. Big toes into the ground, outer four toes up. Try not to turn your foot in and out too much, keeping your foot flat. Don't forget the tension. Big toes down, outer toes up. Big toes down, outer toes up. Toes down, outer toes up. Okay? Full, bar, full body, cars routine, eight to 10 minutes a day. As many times a day as you like, but at least once a day. And the principle here is if you don't use it, you will eventually lose it. So by taking our joints through a full range of motion, we're signaling back to the brain that these are healthy joints and we're using them to their fullest capacity. And that will keep the, the joints lubricated and healthy, but also signal back to the brain that they are going to be used for either exercise or for the rest of the day. So very important that we do this. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, comment below if you need, have any questions or need anything else.